Well, Alex, thank you for participating. Um, could you please describe um, who you are and who Lutheran Life Villages is? Absolutely. Thanks, Dad, for the invitation. Um, my name is Alex Kiefer, and I'm the president and CEO of Lutheran Life Villages. We are a four-campus community in Northeast Indiana. Uh, we are a nonprofit, faith-based organization. We've been around for 90 years this year, so we started back in 1931. Um, our campuses have uh, all kinds of different services that we offer. We've got a traditional uh, CCRC life plan community campus that offers everything from independent living to assisted living, nursing, memory care. Uh, we also have a child care center on campus that we partner with another organization for. And we have this cool program called Rock Study Boxing that we run um, as part of our independent living community. Um, in addition to that, we have two standalone uh, skilled nursing facilities that are you know, traditional rehab and long-term care. Uh, one of those also has a uh, dedicated memory care neighborhood. And then our newest campus is called Piper Trail, and that is a, a pocket neighborhood community that is paired up with an adult day services center that serves individuals with um, Alzheimer's and, and other forms of dementia. That is perfect. And, and I think, you know, we're going to get back to that and talk a bit more about that. So the, the focus of the conversation is just to talk about your perspectives of how active adult preferences are changing. And it, it's always a challenge. Is this a fad? Is this a trend? Where is it going? I, I think most of us serve um, individuals who, who are probably looking at a need more so than a, a um, desired lifestyle. And, and so I think part of our evolution as providers is looking at each of our individual markets and determining, hey, you know, what, what out there um, generates enough volume for us to be able to do something unique. And, and you know, that's, that's what we're all trying to accomplish. Um, so do you think this is, this is a, a fad? Do you think it's temporary? Do you think it's ongoing? Um, I think, I think it's up to us to determine, um, how we look at the entire market and then try to put together the cocktail of services that, that meet those needs and, um, and, and also add to the sustainability and viability of our missions as an organization. I think that's, that's the, the wild card in all of it is trying to look at what, what opportunities there are, where those funding sources are, and how can we put those together? Uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, you look at some of the reports coming out of organizations like Ziegler, there's a ton of uh, private investment going into our market. And, um, you know, there's, there's a uh, willingness to take on a lot more risk sometimes by those individuals than, than, you know, what our organizations are typically willing to take. And so um, I think that's starting to show us some of that market and we're starting to see some of those successes and give us some confidence in our abilities to do things. So, yeah. so Lutheran Life Villages, how, how are you approaching these people that um, you mentioned that you haven't served historically and want to serve? I think it's, it's trying to understand their priorities and um, what the what the type of lifestyle they want to live is um and then determining okay how do we how do we put that together uh, how do we how do we put a business plan around that and um i think it's going to be different in every community i think i think it's um it's a wide market but i think it's a collection of niche markets uh, and and so i think every you know we're in northeast indiana i think the the way that looks in Northeast Indiana is going to be different than the way that looks in, you know, a, a coat on, on the coast or in a, in a community where you have different acceptance levels of different types of communities. You know, we're not a big life plan, life plan community state um, or, or area of the country. Um, so, so there's a whole different approach, I think, in that scenario than, say, in, in somewhere where those communities are, are proliferating. Um, well, so you are in the middle of a development um, cycle on one of these new campuses called Piper Trail. 
And um, how, who do you feel you are reaching out to? Um, and, and what do you think the value proposition was um, with those for those individuals? I think today we are reaching out to people who are, you know, ready to downsize, um, but don't necessarily want to give up certain aspects of their lifestyle. Um, so, you know, that that's a wide range of people. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, you know, you, you, you have to anticipate that um, anyone looking at a, a product that is new um, has something that, that is triggering them to do that. So I think that's up to, up to us as an organization to, to explore that and, and uh, determine if we end up being the right solution for them. I think the residents that you've attracted are coming in with a different set of expectations than residents might have moved into um, one of your campuses 10 years ago. Is, is that accurate? And if so, how do you think that, what difference do you think that might be? I would say individuals who are choosing this type of community, whether it's us or anyone else, you know, I think their expectations are certainly different than, you know, a, a five-story apartment building um, that's that's on a, a large campus. Um, you know, their their expectations are to kind of continue their lifestyle, uh, and yet have have that freedom to not have to worry about some things that maybe they had to worry about um, when they were in their home, wherever that was. You know, some people are are going from one or two or three properties um, down to down to one and simplifying that way. You know, there's just a lot of different factors that go into it. Is a campus of this size, do you think, something that could be duplicated elsewhere in a financially responsible way, I should say? You know, we chose as an organization to say, okay, here's, here's everything that we do. Um, how do we, how do we enhance that? Mm -hmm. um, and, and so certainly, yes, it has to, it has to work financially. It also has to work from a programmatic standpoint. It has to work from a community standpoint. And, and those are all the factors that have, have gone into this. Everyone who has moved into the community um, has so many positive things to share and they um, see us as their resource and uh, they rely on us. And, and that is no different than anyone else who comes into our community. I think, I think what is um, humbling is that they are doing that at a much earlier stage in their life. And so it's, a, it's just an interesting perspective to think about what a development looked like you know, in the 80s and 90s compared to what it looks like today. I think about the same age of people are choosing, but that gap in between, everybody said, no, I'm staying home. And, uh, and I think so that idea of home kind of has get, gotten a little bit more flexible in recent years. Well, you've done something special and um, I'm sure we'll continue to do so. Um, Alex, thank you so much for your time. Um, I think we can all learn from uh, what you're doing and, um, I, and I, I know you're learning a lot from what you're doing too, but in the end, I think you're, you're really expanding people's lives and you're serving your mission and you have a lot of happy people living out there. Uh, we do. We do. Thank you for, thank you for the chance to talk about it. And uh, we're excited to keep it going, finish it up and keep learning. Amen. Thank you, Alex. Thank you.